Our guest in the chair today is Bob Broadhurst. Bob is a former Metropolitan Police Commander. He was in charge of managing policing at many of London's major events, including the Notting Hill Carnival, the Tour de France, two royal weddings, major football matches and the 2012 Olympics. He was awarded the OBE for his services at the Olympics and he's also got the Queen's Police Medal, which he gained in 2005. Bob, welcome to the EPC and thank you for joining us. You've been involved in policing some pretty high profile events. Just how important is it, is it to have a strategy to deal with them? Strategy is key to any event, and particularly a high profile event, um, where you're likely to be held to account after it. And the key thing about a strategy is it's telling everybody who's working on that event with you, for you, including partners, what it is that you as the goal commander want them to do. Now, without a strategy, then there's no direction. Without direction, there could be no tactical plan or no forward. So, so strategy is key. What are the main elements of a strategy? Pretty simple. It's got to tell people the key things that you want to achieve. And it can't be a mix and match. You can't just pluck things out. It's got to be event specific. Um, the key elements are really going to be around, for each organisation, the core principles of your organisation. So for the police service, it was always around maintaining the Queen's peace, uh, the prevention of crime or the detection of crime, and saving lives. So within that, depending on what the type of event was, you'd have a, a suite of probably seven or eight key points that you wanted to achieve. Keep people safe, um, prevent further danger, allow everybody to enjoy the event, have a contingency, prevent crime. It will depend on what the event was, but they've got to be simple, clear messages, and then underpinned by some rationale as to why you've chosen those uh, against other issues. Is there a danger, though, that you could write a strategy, it gets put on the shelf and it gets forgotten about? There is, and to be honest, that, that's what we used to do. We used to pen a strategy, four or five bullet points maybe, everybody agree it, and we put it to one side and then go off and do our own thing. And of course, then when you're held to account, there, there, there's no coherent structure, you have parts of the organisation or partners going off and doing things that are contrary to what other people were doing. So the important part about any strategy is you keep revisiting it, and it must play a part. It must be the golden thread. It appears you know, in gold's overall briefing, it appears in every tactical plan, it appears in all the briefing notes, and then officers or staff for any organisation must clearly understand what the strategy is and their role in delivering it. Now you can have a strategy, but there must be times when unforeseen incidents happen. Have you had to sort of throw the strategy out sometimes and go, we can't go with that, we're going to have to go another way? Another way. Never had to throw the strategy out, simply because the strategy itself is really high level. It's a set of simple statements. Um, and even if things go off the rails a little bit, um, you can still achieve what, what you know, the, the key points. So you still want to save lives, you still want to prevent other people getting injured, you still want to prevent crime. What may change is some of the rationale underpinning it, and more importantly, some of the tactics will need to change to influence the strategy that you set in the first place. So you should never throw the strategy out, you may need to, uh, to adjust your tactics accordingly to achieve that strategy. And when you're trying to achieve that, how important is it to get all the agencies to work together and how much is that part of your strategy? I think that's very important. Um, my, my own view was always when, when a group of partner agencies come together that they must agree to an overriding strategy. And that may just be two or three simple key points. Uh, and in the, the kind of emergency planning world, it's always going to be around saving life, prevention of injury to others, return to normality, you know, those kind of key issues. But then I, I would always say it's important for each agency to go away and draft its own strategy, pertinent to its own staff, its own ethos, its own mission values, and the part that that agency is going to play in the wider plan. And part of the challenge I always found was getting agencies to sign up to that overall strategy and to actually work back to it. And how do you do that? Because they'll have their own way they want to do things. How do you get them all to work together and strategies to work together? I think you do that. It takes time. I think it's done by trust. It's done by working together. Um, Clearly you can't manufacture emergencies or events, so you need to train together, practice together, and, and even informally. I used to spend a lot of time just informal visits over a cup of coffee with key players in other agencies, learning a bit how they worked, explaining what it was I was trying to do or the police were trying to do, so that we got better understanding. And, and I've found over the years partnerships have got stronger and stronger. With the partnerships then, how much is there a need to sort of practice that stuff, even if it's just tabletop exercises, or do you put it away and the strategy only comes out when the incident happens? Well, a strategy must be event specific, um, but of course a strategy is just a kind of, it's a guide to everybody to say this is what we want to achieve on this day. And, and to be perfectly frank, you know, with most major incidents, emergencies, the strategies are going to be pretty similar, you know, the kind of issues we talked about. 
So I think practicing, tabletop exercising, um, just sitting down, going through a few issues with each other are essential. Um, and, and the key bit will be when that emergency happens and you walk into that gold suite or the silver suite or the bronze suite, whichever role you happen to be playing, the key determinant is looking around the room and saying, I know these people, I've worked with them, I trust them, I can get on. Yes, you've planned it before. Exactly. Yeah. Now you're here at the EPC uh, to give a lecture entitled Leadership Within a Multi-Agency Context, a case study of Litvinenko and the Polonium Crisis. That was something that you couldn't really have had a strategy for, is it? I mean, how did you deal with that? Well, y yes and no. The first thing was it was quite a shock to be called back. I was actually on the way to a pantomime. Uh, to call back to Scotland Yard to have a lecture in chemistry and the half-life of polonium, and I was never good at science at school, uh, believe you me. Um, and, and your first thought is, my goodness, how am I going to deal with this? You know, how do I write a strategy that deals with this? But actually, all your training, all the work that you've done at the EPC, you know, at uh, Brams Hill and other places that we've all jointly been to, is all about that unexpected. Because actually, when you strip it down to, the polonium crisis wasn't the kind of CBRN incident that we'd all trained for, we didn't need all the paraphernalia that goes with CBRN, but the, the basics were still there about saving lives, managing people. In this place, it was more health issues, so it was really health that needed to take the lead rather than police. Um, but once you strip the incident back to its basics, your training kicks in, you breathe a sigh of relief, you can put a strategy to it, and then all the agency can go off and develop tactical plans to deal, and they did exceedingly well. And that probably answers my last question. I was going to ask you, can you plan for the unexpected? You can. That's what all our training is about, because in many ways, everything is unexpected. Even things that you've trained for, you don't expect a train crash to happen this afternoon. When it happens, you know, there is that first moment of panic. And I remember you know, a number of incidents where, despite all the training, your mind appears to be staring down a blank tunnel. But that goes after a few minutes, and you suddenly realise, yeah, I've trained for this, I know what to do now. Surround yourselves with some good people, get your tactical advisors on board. You don't have to do all this alone, you know. Uh, uh, as we used to say, you know, just panic slowly, it will come to you. Your training will kick in. It may be unexpected, but your training can deal with that. And training, that, that's the key then? Training, working together, exercising together, constantly. You know, it, that, it, that is the key. Bob, it's been fascinating. Thank you ever so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you.